So our special guest today is Alfred Ali. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Alfred, and how you got started writing horror. Um, I guess I guess I got started probably pretty young. Um, you know, I was a kid in the '90s, so I was obsessed with things like you know Goosebumps and like the Bruce Coville. Um, horror books and quickly graduated Stephen King and that's when I, I really started writing my own own little stories and that just kind of stuck with me all this time and I would say you know probably my 20s I was like I, I really want to I want to do this I want to make this happen this must really started you know buckling down and making it my craft yeah so did you bring any of those stories that you wrote as a child did you bring those into your adulthood and maybe put them in a book um, no, I, uh, I mean, that stuff, I still have a lot of them and it stayed in the era. It was mainly like when you're little, it's you, when you're younger, you're really kind of regurgitating what's around you. It's you're imitating things like that. So it is fun to look back and see like, oh, I must've been reading this at this point. And so, um, so no, I would say, I would say I've, I've left those, left those where they belong <laughs> deep <laughs> in the past. <laughs> So what's drawn you to the horror genre specifically? Um, I don't know. I've always just, I've always liked creepy things. I've always liked spooky stuff. Um, and like growing up, um, I would hear, you know, ghost family ghost stories from my grandmother who talk about, you know, stuff that she experienced or other people experienced. So, so when I was growing up, it was kind of normal to hear about haunted houses and things like that or family curses and so it was it's kind of funny you know when I started going to school and realizing oh most people don't you know believe in these things like just raised like it's a fact I was raised like it's a fact of life and then um you know when I was little I would be you know if my parents rented a horror movie I would be like sneaking out watching it from behind the couch and uh so I just I'd always been obsessed with it um can you tell us a story from your family, one of the curses? Oh, um, yeah, the, the thing with my family was the, the three knocks. So the story was, my grandmother told it was that um, her her family several generations back lived in Appalachia and uh, around the you know, Kentucky, Tennessee area. And uh, it was that there was a woman that was a witch and some distant relative had done something to piss her off. And she showed up one day, pointed at him and said, come Jack and stay. And after that, it was, you would get three loud knocks on your door before some tragedy happened. Somebody died and something like that. And it wouldn't just be like, like the way I've described it. I've never heard the knocks, but other family members have. It's not like someone just knocking on your door. It sounds like they're going to take the door off the hinges. Yeah. Like somebody slamming their body into the door. And when you hear that three times, there's nobody there. When you open the door, something bad happens. <laughs> And there's been a number of times I've gone to funerals or things and they're like, we know so-and-so heard the knocks. And it's like, so it's just always been like part of the family. Yeah. Um, I think back then they, they did have a lot of superstitions, didn't they? Back then in those days. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, very, you know, my family comes from very isolated, very rural areas. So you have, you have a lot of, you know, superstitions and stories and things like that. And even, even growing up as a kid, like, I mean, we lived in the middle of nowhere. Like it's now it's all developed. But when I was a kid, there were no neighbors. Like I had my grandmother next door and a great uncle on the other side. And that was it. Like there wasn't, you know, town was a 30 minute drive. Like, yeah. so I just grew up in the middle of no, nothing. Um, it was kind of nice. I, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so where'd you get your ideas from? Um, usually uh, it can be, it can be anywhere. Sometimes it's, if it's if it's character stuff, if it's like like how people act or um, things like that, it's usually from people I'm around or you know that I've experienced. Or sometimes it's you know things I've done or anything like that. And as far as the creepy stuff, the horror aspects, um, usually it's if something creeps me out or something unsettles me, it's like well I have to use that. You know, and sometimes it might be reading you know, something from history or like like a, I like to read about folklore and superstitions and things like that. And usually something will just come stand out to me and that, that'll be the basis of the story. Fantastic. So how would you go about creating your characters? Um, I usually try to think of, usually it's, it's the, 
I can whatever this this spooky thing is going to be like. It, is this going to be a haunted house story? Is this going to be a creature feature? Is this going to have something like that? And then it's like, well, who would be a fun person to experience this? What would be a fun like? You know, what does this person do for a living? Or what's their personality? Or what's the most interesting way? Like, are they someone who doesn't believe in ghosts? So now they're in a haunted house, or are they someone who's an outdoorsman and now they're in the woods and they they're facing some sort of entity? they've never seen before so that's that's usually how i go about creating my characters is like what what gels well with whatever creepy thing i'm coming up with yeah so are you a plotter or a pantser um plotster but i'm willing to abandon the plot in in pantser as needed like usually i need like when I really get going on a story, I need the first chapter and the last chapter. I got to know how it ends. And I have like an outline for in between, but I'm, I'm also ready to like abandon anything. If something comes up or if I'm like, Oh, it actually make more sense. This character did this. And so I'm going to deviate from this outline. The outline, outline really keeps me from that intimidation of the blank page. When you're looking at that, just that solid white screen, it's like, yeah. it can sometimes be intimidating. Like, what do I do now? Just having like a, almost like a little, you know, list of things like, well, this will happen. This will happen. This will happen. It's enough to like shake away that intimidation factor and, and just get me going. Do you find that you sort of like explore themes or messages in your work? Yeah. Um, usually a lot of like, like things that are, that are affecting people who are like, you know, middle-class or, you know, lower class, like everyday people and the things that, they go through that's always a big factor like you know highlighting income inequality and you know highlighting abuses of people in power like you know police or religious leaders things like that like those are always themes that pop up and no, no matter what the story is or, or where it's set that's going to be a, a thing in it for me because yeah you know growing up you, you witness a lot of that especially when you live in rural areas so that's always a big focus for me do you have any favorite tropes that you sort of like to write in more more than others i i do a lot i do a lot with ghosts so i do a lot with with haunted house tropes and i like writing i like writing stories where people are aware of the tropes and they're aware of the haunted house stuff so then it's then i can kind of figure out ways to subvert it or things like that but i do love going to the classics like that yeah I know you mentioned about the uh, superstitions of your family. Do you ever sort of like put any of your experiences or any of your fears into your work? Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, one thing I put is I had I wrote a story in, in a Cemetery Gates Media anthology. Um, uh, I think it's called Paranormal Confession, and it's like first person horror stories. And there's a and it's a part where a character keeps hearing somebody walking up down the hall and they go to the door and they can see the impressions in the carpet of somebody standing there, but there's nobody there and they can see those impressions coming towards them. And uh, that is based on a story my grandmother told me of like, they li lived in a house where things like that haunt happened, where it's haunted. And she talked about, she woke up one night and uh, she could see that my grandfather was just laying there awake and she like started talking. He's like, shh, listen. And he could hear like someone coming up the hall, someone going down the hall over and over again. And he says, he's been doing that for a half hour, but there's nobody out there. Cause like they're, you know, at that point the kids were grown, they're out of the house. Yeah. And so she talked about just laying there with them, listening to somebody walk all through their house. But there's nobody in the house with them. And so I use that in that one. And I feel like that's one that a lot of people said that creeped them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was based on a true story. Really? Mm -hmm. Is that something that happened to you? um no i've i've had my own experiences with ghosts and things like that that one wasn't but like i i had one where i was i was young and it was like my sister and i were young and we, we slept in the living room because it was like a weekend so we we're gonna stay up late watching movies fall asleep on like the pull-out couch thing and i wake up to her crying and there's a woman standing by the pull-out bed and she's just staring at my sister and my sister's crying her eyes out and i'm like yeah. you know my I've just woke up. I'm a little confused. So I just kind of look at this woman. I'm like, mom. And then it just disappears like from the foot up. I just remember that. It's like almost like a scene wipe, just like a who, and they're gone. And, uh, and then later, um, my grandmother's house where like footsteps happened. I was talking to her and something come came running down the hallway 
and you could hear it moving and you could see it blocked out the light in the hall like so it had substance but there was nothing touching the ground and it just comes down the hall and goes into this room and i remember going over there and there's nothing in that room there's nothing anywhere and my grandma was just nonchalant about it she's asked me she's like did you hear that i was like yeah she's like did you see that i was like yeah she was oh good i'm not crazy and stuff like that never never freaked her out (laughs) freaked me out but it never bothered her (laughs) it's always the way though isn't it (laughs) Mm -hmm. okay so um What's the most difficult thing about writing horror for you? Um, honestly, it's setting up the scares can sometimes be challenging because it's um, there's actually a Max Booth the third is a really great horror writer and he and he did an article recently where he talked about the similarities between comedy writing and horror writing and he's so right because he was like a scare a scare is like a joke you got you got set up and punchline and it's got to work it's the same with horror is you have to set it up it can't just happen you got to plant seeds of what's going to happen and to do that without you know like you mentioned tropes and things like that without making it obvious without doing the jump scares without doing stuff like oh i saw that in this one movie it's trying to come up with ways to creep out the audience and unsettle them in a way that fits in the story can sometimes be a challenge yeah so what's been the most difficult scene that you've ever had to write um see i would say in um i have a book coming out called high strangeness it'll be out next it'll be out early next month and there's a scene where in one room i have almost 10 characters (laughs) and it's like giving attention to all these characters jumping back and forth from points of view and just never have having a feeling of like in movies and in movies and books, we have too many characters in a room, which almost like some people are almost on pause, yeah. and it's like giving everyone their attention and game and moving moving the scene forward without neglecting anybody, and it really becomes like a becomes a challenge, <laughs> like like almost mapping out scenes like that. Fantastic. So, what sort of feedback have you had from readers? Um. I've gotten I've gotten quite a lot of feedback. Um, you know, you always enjoy the positive ones um, when people are, when people tell you how great you are. You lo- those those are always great. But um, I've also got reviews where it's like the they'll be like, well, then you know this didn't work for me, or this you know felt like a little bit of a miss. And I feel like that's the kind of stuff where you can tell good feedback where it's somebody who it enjoyed it, but they have some things to help you move the forward story forward yeah. and some positive changes you can make. And sometimes you can learn from those reviews. Um, I feel like five-star reviews are great, but you know, you don't get anything from them. One-star reviews are usually so negative. They don't really get anything from them, but sometimes those three-star reviews are ba- basically, you know, great feedback. Yeah. So um, from readers, I, I kind of get a little bit of everything. You know, yeah. sometimes the one-stars are, are funny. Like I had one person who counted the number of, times my story had the word fuck and they gave up after 16 and i did the math and they made it to like page 25 but that was a funny one then there was another one that like was like four paragraphs of everything i did wrong in the book and I was like gosh that's okay. i felt like i took a beating <laughs> <laughs> uh, i wouldn't want them to read my book then if they were counting the word fuck yeah <laughs> I, don't why that, I don't know why that bothered them so <laughs> You know, with it being horror, um, you'd kind of expect some sort of uh, explicit language anyway, wouldn't you? I would think so. I would, yeah. I would think so. <laughs> yeah, they, they need to read another genre. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> do you ever feel sorry about scaring you, your readers? No, because I, I feel like... I feel like that's what that's what this what you want. You want to you want to creep them out. Um, in fact, I, like you talk about reviews, I read one of mine because like I know you shouldn't, but I always do read mine. And uh, they were saying how it was pretty creepy, but not enough to keep them up at night. I was almost like, oh, <laughs> like I, I let you down. Like I feel like if somebody's like this, just freaked me out. And, you know, I mean, this made me lose sleep, or you're horrible for doing this. That's the kind of stuff. I'm like, great, excellent. I have done I've done what you wanted me to do. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever encountered a place or a real life event that you felt would have been good in a book 
Oh, um. Oh yeah, I've uh, I'm trying to think because there's like, I've read different things like um. Especially like uh, you know, hit Texas history and things like that. Where I grew up, I feel like there was, you would always find stories of just like. You'd live in a small nothing town, and then you'd find out like, oh, well, a hundred years ago there was this, you know, bloody feud that like took out all these people, and so you, just, you come across things like that, like the the dark history of the of America. I feel like there's a lot of those kind of tales I could make it into books. Um, I've I've also been fascinated by. I went to um, a, a Spiro Mound um, Park in Oklahoma, and it's uh you know, it's a burial mound structure that was made a um, thousand years ago. And uh, they talked about, you know, it was initially hollow. It was like, it was a tomb and had all these things in it. And they think it might've been built as a way there's a climate change happening in that era that was like destroying farm, destroying crops and driving away animals. And this whole mound was made as a way of like appeasing the gods and restarting the universe and trying to fix that. And so I've always thought that would have been an interesting thing. Um, yeah. And and on the way there, I also went to a place where there were some rocks that had like supposed, you know, Viking runes carved in them. So the idea was that at some point, you know, 800 years ago, Vikings were wandering around in the middle of Oklahoma. And I was like, I feel like that would be a, <laughs> that'd be a fun book. Yeah. Fantastic. So what advice would you give to aspiring writers who want to break into the horror genre? Oh, I'd say, I'd say read, as with, no matter what genre you're doing, read it everything and read you know any genre like the number of of times like inspiration from my horror stories came from reading other genres or other books or the news or history so just kind of read everything um you know pay attention to like if you're reading a book and you hate it and it just it's killing you like you know before you put it down try to think about why is this awful for me why doesn't it work and and same thing when you read something that's good like you know enjoy the book in the moment but take time to think back of like why did this pull me in um also write all the time don't be afraid if your first draft feels terrible because i mean a lot of them are pretty rough like some people you know say get that first draft done as fast as you can because it doesn't matter if it's bad just get it on the page and you can revise later and other people kind of do a revise as you go i think do the whole first draft first that works best for me then go back and fix it do multiple drafts um and just yeah just you know, be willing to read and review other people's work, like make connections, like you be the kind of person you want for your writing, the support you'd want for yourself, be that for other people. And I feel like that'll come back to you. Yeah. Someone mentioned something to me the other day called author karma. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever heard that term. Um, but it, it is right. You get out what you put in. And obviously, if you're nice to people, it comes back, doesn't it? It's like normal karma, but they called it author karma. Yeah. And yeah, because there's, that's why like I try to really, you know, read read other people's stuff and <clears throat> and review it and share and share stuff. And if someone has something, like if an author has, you know, they got a book picked, picked up or they're going to be published or things like, you know, celebrate that good news. There's room at the top for everybody. You know, don't let jealousy keep you from, you know, being your best self and being the best author and, and yeah, making those connections, Arthur Kama. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So have you got any exciting projects that you're currently working on? Um, I, I have a novel. It's a, I wrote one called Apartment 239 that I put out last year and I have its sequel. It's going to come out called High Strangeness. I'm excited about that. I, I wrote a haunted house novella that, I think it's pretty good, kind of an Amityville horror meets Gremlins, kind of a weird mashup. And uh, I've sent it to some places, and that's one of those things I have my finger, fingers crossed on that, like, you know, refreshing my email, <laughs> waiting for responses. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's about, at the moment, that's, those, those are the two things. But I'm always, you know, working on something. Fantastic. Well, I wish you the best with all of those. Thank you. I hope you get something back. So lastly, where can the listeners find your books? Uh, you can find them on Amazon, um, ebook and paperback. Uh, you can go to my website, elfrally.com. There's links there too. And um, 
I'm basically on every social media thing you know, because you have to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you, know, you can find my stuff. And, and I'll have most of my stuff's horror for grownups, but I do have a kid's book that I put out in that came out in October that I'm really, really proud of. So that's, that's another thing people can pick up too. Is that horror? Yep. It's a horror kids book. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Gotta get them young. <laughs> <laughs> it's right though. If they learn these things when they're a little bit younger, um, it makes it a little bit easier for them to go out into the world. I think um, I used Agreed. to let mine watch horror movies and I used to explain that it wasn't real and it was computers doing all the bits and pieces on there and they do like the horrors now they still get scared because uh they're like that but um yeah yeah I found that out with my oldest because we've been watching a lot of horror movies and I've, I've just in my head I'm just kind of like oh I can watch anything with her and uh we watched one and it just totally freaked her out I'm like oh okay I guess you are still little <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way there, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's been lovely having you on the show, Alfred. So thank you very much thank for you. accepting my invite. Of course. And I wish you the best of luck with uh, all your writing. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for having me.